The computer we're going to look at today is a very unique and rare part of Altair history. This is the Foley version of the 8800B turnkey computer. That's Foley as in the department store chain Foley's. This was the first computer ever sold through a department store. Now to make this computer from their standard turnkey computer, MITS put in a smaller motherboard in order to make room over here on the left for either one or two of their five and a quarter inch uh, mini disk drives. Now the mini disk drive was a standard product for MITS at this time, but it was an external drive system, one drive per external cabinet. In making this Foley computer, they didn't really redesign any of that. What they did is just literally move the content of each drive cabinet inside this main chassis here. And in that cabinet was not only the drive, but also an interface board called the buffer board. So both of those were moved in per drive right into this main cabinet. And we'll take a look and see how that goes together in just a minute. All right, over here at the, uh, on the right, you see the key that gave the turnkey computer its name. That became the power switch on the turnkey series of computers. Uh, the other thing that you can tell is missing is the front panel. The big front panel interface of address lights and data lights is gone. Uh, with the turnkey series of computers, MITS went the route of other manufacturers, and that is using a, a monitor ROM to provide basic front panel functions like memory examine or change or jumping to an address, rather than including a full front panel, because that front panel cost a lot of money and added to the complexity of the system. So what remains on the turnkey series is just a couple of switches, um, a run stop switch that either started, um, started the CPU or stopped the CPU, and then next to that is a reset switch. They called start for some reason, and a few indicator lights. All right, well, let's take this uh, cover off this computer and take a look inside and see what all we got. All right, we got the cover off. Let's go ahead and take a look inside and see what we've got. All right, over here on the far left, this is the turnkey board that made the turnkey computers possible. This is a multi-function board. First of all, it provides uh, 1K of PROM space. That's organized as four 1702 EPROMs. And typically you'd have at least two EPROMs on there. <clears throat> Excuse me, two EPROMs on there. One would be the disk boot loader PROM that allowed you to boot disks. The second PROM would be the turnkey monitor, which is what allowed you to examine memory, change locations, and jump to addresses since you no longer had the front panel. The board also provides an auto start feature so that when you powered it on or did a reset, it could jump to a specified address since, of course, you couldn't do that with the front panel now. Most typically, you'd have it jump straight to the disk boot loader to boot up your disk or into the monitor where you could run some commands and you could jump to the disk boot loader there to boot your disk as well. The board also provides a serial port. You can see that connection right here. This serial port runs to a DB25 on the back connector. This serial port duplicates the first port on a 2SIO board. They're very popular serial board, which pretty much all Altair software supported. So by having it on this board, it saved having to have a separate 2SIO board, saved another slot. Um, the board, of course, also provides an interface to run the miniature front panel that we have here. You can see the cord goes over and buried there in the dark is the front panel board. So it runs the lights and indicators on this front panel. We can see we have the stop run switch that stops and runs the 8080 processor and then the start switch is basically a reset and then a few indicator lights to indicate what's going on in the system. All right, also in this, of course, would be our CPU board. This is the standard MITS 8800B CPU board. Um, out of the 8800B series of computers. Next to that, I've got two MITS static RAMs. These are 16K each, so we got a total of 32K in here. And then finally, these two boards together form the mini disk floppy controller. It's two board set, just like it was with the um, eight inch controller, hard sector floppy controller, very, very similar design to the eight inch. All right, gonna have to do a little bit of digging to see this. But out of the back of the floppy controller comes a ribbon cable. There we go. This ribbon cable is the data interface to the drives. This normally would have run to the rear panel and then out to the first floppy drive in the chain. In the floppy drive, it would have then gone inside its cabinet and connected to the interface board, the buffer board. Well, this is all done inside the cabinet now. So here's the ribbon cable and it's running to the buffer board. That's this board right here. This would have been inside the drive cabinet. 
This board provides an interface to the drive itself. You can see that cable then loops around and goes into the rear of the drive. And then it also provides power for the drive. That's this orange cable right here, orange and black Halloween cable. So this board was a power supply. In fact, that's a lot of the components you see. And then a minor interface in translating the signals that goes to the drive. If there was a second drive in here, you could see it would mount parallel to this one and these additional holes. You can also see that there's room here for another drive. And in fact, the chassis is punched for the second drive. Just the front panel was, in this case, designed for a single drive system. All right, and then in here, we also have the drive. This is a, one of the very early first generation single-sided, single density drives. This is a Shugart SA400. Now the buffer board normally had its own power or own transformers um, in the drive cabinet, but in this case, the buffer board gets its power by tapping into the giant transformer that's part of the 8800B. All right, so that's the inside. Let's go ahead and close this up and um, get this up and running. We're gonna boot Mini Disk Basic, which is what would have been used in the day. Uh, that's what came with the computer if you bought it through Foley's. All right, so let's go ahead and get this machine up and running now. Typically, you'd have just left your stop run switch in the run position, and all you have to do is turn on this computer. It'll automatically come up running and jump to the address we have set on the turn keyboard. The address I have set is the turnkey monitor, so as soon as we turn it on, we'll be up and running in the monitor. That's it. Nothing else to do on these. Pretty simple compared to the front panel. All right, if we take a look over here, you can see a dot prompt. That's the prompt from the monitor. Some of the commands in the monitor, uh, the memory command lets you examine memory location, so we're gonna examine memory location zero. Hit the space bar and it goes to subsequent locations. Everything's in octal. You can also change a location by typing in the octal value. As soon as you type the three digits, it writes that and goes ahead and goes to the next location. So I've been writing in increasing numbers. We can go take a look at six and see there's our zero, one, two, three, four that we typed in. Uh, the other main command that you typically use would be the jump command. That's how you jump to an address and ran something. To boot this computer, I wanna to jump to the disk boot loader. So let's do a J177400. Now, before I type that last zero, we're gonna to have to go put the disk in. That's because the second you type that last zero, it jumps to that address and begins execution. We don't have to hit return or anything. Let me zoom back a bit and see if I can get the disk drive and the monitor in the same shot. All right, so here is mini disk basic. I'll put that in, I'll type the last zero, and now it starts booting. Now this is about the same size image as it is for normal disk basic with 8 inch drive, but it takes a good bit longer to load as you can see here. Definitely um, a slower drive and smaller drive, these first generation five and a quarters. But as you know, it wasn't too long before five and a quarters were as fast as the um, eight inch drives, all sorts of improvements in capacity and they eventually took over the market. All right, here's our standard memory size prompt. Hit return. I'll choose Okie Data for the printer. Standard prompts you've seen in other videos. Okay, as before, we can't do anything to um, mount the disc, but before we mount the disc, we actually have to pull out the boot disc and insert our data disk instead. The reason is because these disks were so small that they had to have two formats. One was a boot disk and that was really all it was good for. The second was your files disk that you could actually read and write files from. So as before, you can't do anything until you mount it. What the mount does is go through every track and figure out what free space it has so that as subsequent file creation and deletion is done, it knows where to put things. Doesn't take too long on this, even though it's a slow drive, because there's a quarter as much data to go through as the eight inch drives. All right, let's take a look at the program. Let's go ahead and load the MDT program. That is mini disk test. Do something besides a game for a change. All right, and you can see that was relatively quick. It's not bad. It's a usable system for a decent sized program there. All right, go ahead and run this. What this does is uh, head load and unload. Actually, it's just starting and stopping the drive motor as it loads the head. You can see that activity there. 
Next thing it does is does a bunch of track seeks back and forth. I can hear them, you probably can't because of the noise and because I'm talking. And then it eventually goes in and does a bunch of uh, file save and delete operations, which takes quite a bit of disk I.O. the way they did their um, disk layout. So it's a pretty good test. Anyway, so this runs for quite a while. It does a really good job exercising the disk so you know whether it's good or not. Um, but there you go. That's what it was like to own one of the first computers or the first computer ever sold through a department store. This is the Foley version of the Altair 8800B turnkey series.